Hi everyone, my name is Phoenix and uh, welcome to One Hoppy Rising. So One Hoppy Rising, what does that mean? Uh, well basically, uh, One Hoppy is an anagram of Phoenix, so it's the same letters of Phoenix but rearranged. You might be asking, well where's the X? There's no X in One Hoppy, um, but numerologically the letters F, O and X all correspond to the number 6. All right. So if you replace the X with, an, with another O and rearrange it, you've got the word one hoppy. So that's meaning number one. So you've got uh, one hopi rising, and then you've also got phoenix rising. And that's the symbolism, the bird of fire, that, you know, it's all about its uh, phase of destruction and decay. And then it resurrects and it, and it evolves and is reborn even stronger, even wiser, even more capable than before. And it goes on its next round of life. And then eventually it gets reduced to ashes, back to chaos, and then a new form of order arises out of this chaos. So that's the idea of the phoenix, is the forces of destruction and creation working together. And obviously a phoenix rising represents that, that phase that is all about being reborn from the ashes of chaos, from something being destroyed. Um, it's kind of relatable given what's going on in the world right now. So, my name is Phoenix, but I chose that name when I was 13 to represent what I am about um, because I realized, you know, life is all about adapting and it's all about change. And the more you try to hold on and uh, refuse the future and to even look at it and try to just bring the past and, and ignore the new developments, you know, the, the more you hold on and try to keep things the same, the more reality kind of just hits you on the back end and uh, reminds you who's in charge. The only thing that is constant in this place is change. So you're better off being on that phase where you're rising up and you are elevating yourself higher as a result of the change as opposed to simply losing and suffering at the bottom of that change. Um, so the other meaning of the word, one Hopi, all right? So Hopi, uh, the American Indian, uh, the Indian tribe, uh, Hopi stands for little people, little people. Because these people recognized that they were, they were humble, you know, and I like the term because, you know, it's got that whole essence of being humble, but it's also, uh, when I think about one little people, especially in the context of one little people rising, because that's what one Hopi means, one little people, so all these little people, uh, I think about that, that's exactly who we are. When we're talking about industries and titans of industries and this corporatocracy, or should I say corporate technocracy that we live in, uh, you know, we are the little guys. We are these little people underneath the ginormous thumb of a few bad men right at the top. Okay, so one little people rising in essence is all about unity. Basically, it's about all of the little people, all the people at the bottom, all the middle class, uh, working class, lower class, all the people, the little people of the world banding together, pretty much strength through unity. And unity, not through faith, not like V for Vendetta, remember that? Strength through unity, unity through faith. No, 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 no. Faith is not good enough. We need more than faith. Strength through unity. Uh, and unity through reason. Unity through reason. Unity through common cause. Um, so that's what this page is about. It's about us little people banding together as one little people. Because, you know, it's easy to snap a twig, but if we band together, one little people rising. Because there is a state of chaos in the world right now. Everything is unraveling. Everything's falling apart. And whether we're going to be at the bottom of the ladder or somewhere in the middle or at the top really comes down to our personal choices in terms of what we choose to do now, how we choose to react to what is happening, how we choose to be affected and how, or even whether if we choose to let somebody else and these outside forces dictate our fates, or whether we're gonna take the reins of life and dictate our own fate and contribute as much as we can towards changing the course of history for the better. For the better for the people, not for the better for industry, for the better for the people. So that's what this page is about. So I invite you here. Um, I'll be doing lots of posts at the moment with this lockdown and all of this. I've had this page up for years because um, I've just been waiting for something like this to occur. I've been researching for about 17 years now on and off. 
very similar to Ike um, in terms of I just want to connect the dots, figure out the end game and, and anticipating what's going to happen to get to that end game and how can we counteract that, how can we be prepared. Um, and, you know, one thing is clear. Regardless of all the theories, regardless of all speculation of how things could play out, one thing is clear. It is absolutely imperative and it is absolutely essential that we band together, uh, that we find a sense of cohesion, that we establish cohesion with each other, that we get on the same page. Uh, it's like the story of Babylon that fell and then everyone was left speaking in different tongues. If we can't speak the same language, if we can't truly look each other in the eye and have some respectful and reasonable strength through unity and unity through reason, all right, if we can't be reasonable, if we can't look at the world with reasonable eyes and a reasonable mind and we can't detect that some unreasonable things are being done right now and, we, and they haven't even been justified with good reason, if we can't detect that, and there is no reason to have faith. There's no reason to simply have blind faith, to rely on a God, to rely on an alliance doing all the hard work for you, and relying on the universe, karma, relying on just keeping positive and not feeding a negative reality. At the end of the day, if there's men at the door, your positive thoughts and your God and your faith is not going to shield you. It's not going to shield you from those men at the door. And there are men at the door. And this is the reality. And yes, your will is very powerful, your will. But you know what's more powerful than just your will? When different numbers of will, when you get a multitude of wills coming together, working towards a similar cause or same cause, that's what we have in our world unfolding right now, is a multitude of people working towards a similar cause. And really, if we want to have any chance of doing anything besides just going along with the show and it's crossing our fingers it's going to play out in our favor if you want to do anything else besides that and have any control any option in this uh, at all other than what they give us in the end uh then we need to also unite first we need to wake up first we need to wake up and be reasonable and respectful to each other and communicate uh we got to be able to discern what is unreasonable and uh, these changes that are going on and uh, some of them to stay, I guarantee. And we've got to be able to discern and just and call out and say, well, that's not a reasonable justification. Fuck you very much. Uh, and then we also got to unite. Once we have that vision of like, this isn't right. I don't agree with these people's vision. And we create our own vision. We create our own ideas of the kind of world that we can create together, that we want to strive for, not just for us, but for our future, for our future generations, for our planet, okay? Once we do that, we can then unite our vision together. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what you look like, what you believe in, as long as we can connect to that universal truth that we all essentially want the same things. We all just want peace. We all just want good health a decent measure of prosperity. And it doesn't need to be so excessive that anyone else has to be, uh, you know, put it at, at expense. We all want just peace, prosperity, health, happiness, very simple things. And we've got more than enough means in our world right now to achieve it for everyone. And yes, you might put your faith in a few men at the top and, and they say, well, they're, they're striving to create this kind of world. I look at, uh, not at things with faithful eyes. I don't look at things the way I idealize them to be. I don't look at things the way I prefer them to be. And I don't uh, deliberately avoid things because they're uncomfortable or undesirable. You know, I try to look at the patterns based on everything I've experienced, based on everything I've read and observed, based on other people's views that I've taken on board. I look at the overall picture, how it all fits together, and I... I see patterns, and to tell you, the patterns with industry, patterns with big business, those that have been ruling at a master class for the last few centuries, okay, I don't have much faith in. I don't. And there is multitudes of good reason to not have faith in them. Because they were meant to be the government, by and for the people. And they're just, they're just using the people for themselves. And when, when the chips are down, they don't even stand by us. When our chips are down, they oppress us further. Guys, as part of a solution, they repress us further. And they restrict our freedoms and our liberties. And our ability 
to dream a dream and to realize that dream and make it happen. And furthermore, this life becomes a list of multiple choice options. And the multiple choice options becomes less and less and less. But meanwhile, is maintained the illusion that you have a choice, that there is some measure of freedom, at least for now. So this group is for, if any of this resonates with you, uh, it's for, it's for you. It's for the people. It's for you, it's for me. It's for you and for me to put aside our differences, regardless of what they might be. Put aside our differences as long as we believe that we can agree that we want to build towards a better future. That we want to build a future that's going to provide for our generations to come, for the planet. Everything that we need to sustain the health of this planet, as well as the people and all living organisms on it, perhaps. Uh, if we can agree with that, just trying to establish a world where we can all have health and peace and prosperity and happiness. Does that sound bad to anyone? Uh, if we want to work towards that and if we want to unite, put aside the differences, focus on that common cause. This isn't a place for you know quibbling and quarreling and it's not about me versus you, my stance versus your. This is no place for ego. This is a place for you to come and learn it's a place for you to come and share. It's a place for you to come and support one another. To encourage one another. Okay? You have all these things happening in the world and people think, Oh, people meeting up in secret shadowy sections like, remember, like Vorder villains plotting these evil plots? Well, kind of. I mean, they do have think tanks that they invest fucking billions into. And they do have information and intel and data being compiled around the globe or focus on... Uh, improving the efficiency and efficiency of their plans and maximizing profit and advancing their agenda with minimum expenses, even if that means taking shortcuts that ends up affecting the environment, uh, animals, you and me. It's all about maximize the advancement of the agenda, maximize profit, maximize power, maximize control, minimize costs at any expense. Okay? So we need to maximize our ability to communicate with each other. Because where they, they have us lost fight, fighting fights between each other, being divided in a million different factions for a million different reasons, and it's all a distraction. It's all weapons of mass distraction. There is one common enemy. Let it be known. For the one people rising, there is one common enemy that has its thumb above us. Has its thumb well and truly above us on that screw point, all right? And if we're going to have any chance of overpowering this thumb on compromising with it and saying, no, we're tired of this whole people for the government, ordered by the government, controlled by the government, we want to have more of a say, more input into how our world is being shaped, how it's being controlled, how we are being regulated. We want to have input on that not just accept whatever multiple choice options he goes. We need to band together in order for us little people to become a mighty titan, essentially. We need to unite to become a mighty titan to rival the magnitude of the influence and power of these men at the top with all the resources they have, okay? If we don't band together, if we don't try to get back onto the Tower of Babylon, so to speak, before we all spoke a thousand different tongues, if we don't speak the same language, get on the same page, agree on what is essential, and stop getting so caught up in petty distractions, destruction of our freedom is inevitable. And our ability to do anything about it is completely diminished. And I don't want that. I personally don't want that. So this is a place, like I said, to come, to talk, to learn, to spread the word, to invite other people, to share around, get people on board who want to rise up, to unite as one little people against tyranny, against destruction of freedom, liberty, against destruction of freedom of speech, against forced intrusion, which is what's happening soon enough. That's what they're pushing for. Forced vaccinations, whether you're pro or against, there's principles about this, which we're not going to go into now. But there's all matter of topics I'm going to be discussed here. I'm going to be doing a lot of research on different things. A lot of stuff at the moment doing on Bill Gates because he's a big player. He's a big player. Um, you know, he modeled his foundation on, on the Rockefeller's vision. And if you know anything about David Rockefeller and the Rockefellers and their position in the world, then 
doesn't take too much thought to understand that uh, something big is happening here, something very big, and the thumb is finally getting that, that last thumb screw down packed, the nail in the coffin, and I hope we can unite so we can create a force sufficient enough to stop that nail from being hammered in the coffin so we can secure freedom in our future, more freedom and, and, and liberty, and not just secure more security and more surveillance like they did with 9-11. And he, this is the new terrorist now, the, the invisible killer that has even us divided from each other. They're gonna use that to restrict us further. Screw that, screw that. So please be respectful here when you are sharing, when you are talking, we are here to empower each other. This isn't a place for fear mongering, but fear mongering I think is a coward's way of saying, I don't wanna look at that. Don't force that in my face. I'm gonna keep my head in the sand. Uh, it's a coward's way because it takes courage to seek truth even when that truth is not preferable and even when it's very challenging and it poses a set of obstacles that you would prefer like some people like oh, I'll deal with that later when it gets that bad right now I just want to put that off and just just distract myself and have fun and keep positive that's cowardice dressed up as whatever okay it takes courage to step in truth and when you realize that it's not about making compromise on your security, on your future freedoms and liberties, just so you can be comfortable, just so you can be in conformity and uniform with everyone else and not stick out and not be ostracized and judged and berated, all right? When you realize that this quest for truth, as much as it takes courage, that it truly it shouldn't make you feel afraid, it shouldn't be treated like that's fear-mongering, it should empower you, it shouldn't diminish you, facts diminish you. These facts, the actual fear mongering that's being proliferated as propaganda through our mainstream media, that is diminishing you. These facts that you feel you've got no control over, no more room for more investigation, these are the cold hard facts, and fuck are they cold. And that's how it's served. And if people just are enforcing this narrative that you just meant to swallow this, this, these, these servings of fact as they're delivered without any question, that to me is fear mongering. That to me is a much scarier situation than me being allowed, simply being allowed to discuss with other people and make up my own mind for myself as to what I believe to be fact or not. What I just believe to be more likely than not likely, because we never really know the facts. New and facts are revised, diagnoses are changed, laws are redacted or rewritten. Okay, so this is a place, there's no such thing as fear mongering here. If you're afraid, not of truth, but people speaking their truth, if you're afraid of people merely sharing their perspective, if you're afraid of people merely presenting information to you that might cause a bit of cognitive dissonance, and you feel like you want to reject that information because you can't incorporate it, and you feel like running away, I urge you and I prompt you to stay, please, and, and just bear with it, and you will adapt, and you will develop a capacity to face contradiction, to face a different view and not be this fight or flight, abuse or play victim. It's not fair what you're doing. You're just trying to scare everyone. Stop doing this. Be or abusing people, calling them idiots and tinfoil hat wearers for just sharing information. Instead of reacting with fight or flight, if you can just stay and, and try to adapt, you don't have to agree. You don't have to take the information as gospel, but you don't have to do that with anyone. You don't have to take information from anyone as gospel. This is a place just for free discourse, free conversation, with respect. If you're not being respectful and I have to pull you up a couple of times, you're out of here. You're no fucking around. You can shoot straight. You can shoot straight. But I'm talking about people that can't contribute anything more than a laughing face or an insult or a, a clapping audience meme or a picture of a, a gif or a picture of a tinfoil hat. If that's all you can contribute and nothing of actual reason or valuable use um, you're not welcome here because you're a retractor from freedom of speech. You're detracting from our ability to create cohesion in this world. And they're, they're, they're moving towards a one world. We've heard about this for a long time. Anyone that's done any research, they're moving towards a one world. People need to also, in their own way, create one world between them and get on the same page. If we're going to have any chance of having any control as to our fate. And that's what this page is for. It's for us to rise together as one 
little people rising. I hope you join us and I hope you stick. Um, and when I say rising, it's not about like a violent revolution. I'm thinking eventually more like a social, uh, a social reform and a, a reform of everything. A political reform, reformation of the very systems and structures of control in our lives. And, uh, you know, there's no reason why eventually we're going to push for having like some kind of application where everybody could, if they want to see certain legislation being put in place, they could post these ideas that are then put up on this thing uh, on, on a website that people can visit as multiple choice uh, multiple choices that the people decide the multiple choices for what they are concerned about in their world and have this happen every six months so it's constantly being revised maybe every year not every four years but every year so it's constantly being updated and adapted given recent changes and in, 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 in everything and then once there's a list you know people like a poll people can vote for the most popular one and will go through different tiers of voting, it will get narrowed down, narrowed down, narrowed down, and then bang, you know, a government, quite literally, not ruled by a few men, who all come from fucking oil, who all come from fucking industry, like, they're equipped with wisdom, and an understanding of philosophy, to fucking guide how people should live their lives, but it's not about how you should live your life, there is no end game, okay, there is no end game in terms of winning your freedom, getting to a day where we create a paradise, and we can just sit back and enjoy, you can tell what the agenda is. There is the agenda is that there's never going to be an end game for you. Besides, actually, the end. There's never going to be an end to your work, to your slavery, because that's the message we hear all the time. Anytime we have enough right now we, with technology, we could create enough, or we could live like kings. We have things that last long enough, right? And and we could just be focusing more and doing what we love and being artisans and specializing in our own crafts. Um, Instead of a lot of people having to begrudgingly, depressingly do things they hate because they're forced to. Because this world, ruled by these men and these industries, prioritize business. And they prior you know, the way they speak is really clear. How they say, like, it's top priority. More than anything, the top priority is we need to create more jobs. We need to create more, more employment opportunities. It's all about creating more jobs to keep you occupied in your occupation. To keep you occupied in your chains. All right? And then propaganda, uh, indoctrinating and inserting these ideas in your head that you, you need to work, you need to be occupied so that you can go out there and, uh, you know, buy all these different possessions that you don't really need. Possessions that end up possessing you. And then at the end of that, once you've been occupied and once you've become possessed, you go home, you have a beer, just take your mind off all the negative stuff. Just sit back, don't worry. Uh, watch a TV program, and that programs you with all this fucking, these cop shows, all these, uh, you know, propaganda showing you that this is the way the world is. We're normalizing it. This is, you know, this is normal to just be occupied five days of your life doing shit you fucking hate, to possess things that end up possessing you, so you can go home just to be programmed, to think that it's all normal, and wake up and keep doing the same thing again. This is the world we live in. It is a matrix. It's a fucking dream. You can keep your head on the sand and watch this dream turn into such a blatant nightmare that even the most ignorant, blind person in the world will see. They will see. One day they will see, and the day is approaching. Or you can take your head out of the sand. You can wake up. You can wake other people up. You can realize that you don't have to be afraid. That if we stick together, this truth, the quest for truth and information can actually empower us. It can empower us to be more aware and more able and more equipped and prepared for what is to come, for what might come. It's much better to theorize and speculate just in case, just to be prepared, just in case, as opposed to just simply knowing everything will be all right. Because these guys have our best interests at heart. And they print all the facts. And I'm just going to repeat the facts. So, welcome to One Hoppy Rising. We're here to deprogram you, me, everyone. To help reprogram ourselves. To help liberate ourselves. Just like Neo in the Matrix. To liberate people from the illusion. To empower people who are working. To empower them. Not for the battle physically, but for the social reform that we can, using reason, assert. Not coerce with physicality, but assert 
our right, with our sovereignty, with our independent sovereignty, our God-given right, our God-given liberties. And I'm not talking about believing God necessarily, but if you don't understand what I'm talking about when I say sovereignty, and you're born here, you're not a thing to be owned. Even in worst case crazy left-wing conspiracy theory, let's say you're a drone, let's say you're a clone, let's say you're a hybrid alien and you were made to be a slave. Even if these theories, even if there's some truth in that, which I'm not saying there is, but even in the worst case scenario, you are, these people think they own you because they made you. Just like in Westworld. Um, well, that's what Westworld explores. Even in that worst case scenario, if you've got the capacity to feel pain, you've got the capacity to be aware and sentient, then that's usually, when we're watching that, we always have this feeling in our hearts, like, yeah, that person has, should have rights. We feel bad for them, and those rights that these robots don't even have are being violated. You know what I mean? It's this inherent thing we know. It's universal. We know when something is right. We know when something is wrong. And so I ask you, when you look at how the world is being occupied, how, how the world is being possessed, how the world is being programmed, I've got to ask you one question. Does it feel right? I mean, yeah, sure. It might be normal. It might just be the way the way it is. Next question then would be, why is that the way it is? And should we allow it to remain that way? I mean, we've got a world falling in chaos right now. Um, certain people, we speak about certain people in the dark, the deep state, the cabal, Illuminati, whatever you want to call it. The main method here, the main mechanism is order out of chaos. We are in the chaos event right now, similar to 9-11. We are in a chaos event. Things are being ordered around us under our very freaking noses right now as we speak. Everything is changing. But out of this chaos, we don't have to. We also have control here. We don't have to go back to the old world. In all chances, we're probably not going to. But we don't even have to settle for those parts of the old world that are probably going to remain that we don't really like. That don't really agree with us. That make you think, actually, yeah, Phoenix... It doesn't quite feel right. When I think about how we're being occupied and programmed and possessed and all of this, something seems a bit off here and there. We don't have to go back to... When, you know, it's like all the plants have been ripped up. Everything economically, we're in a state of chaos. Everything's being uprooted. We don't have to put everything back the same way it was in the areas that make us feel like something's wrong. That make us feel like, yeah, that's not in line with my vision, with the kind of world I want to live in and want to create. We can put it back together a different way, and we've got more opportunity now to do that if we band together, if we make our collective voice known, a whisper alone, a single match lit. You know, yeah, a single match can banish a room of darkness, okay? But matches together, you know what I mean? Now you've got a fucking weapon. Whispers together will be a voice that will be fucking heard around the world. A voice that cannot be denied. A voice that cannot be silenced. Regardless of the algorithms. Regardless of whoever pushes this button or that. But we need to get our voices together. To that point where it can't be silenced. And then the only option remaining for them. Is to listen to us. To hear us. And to heed our words. But before our word can have any power, before our word can make a difference and lead into action and changing our world, which comes from our words, before our word has anything going for it, we've got to learn how to speak to each other and together as one people rising, speaking words, not to diminish our fellow man, but to encourage and enlighten and empower and Rise, our fellow man, our fellow brother and sister. And once we're there together, on the same page, we can write history any way we choose. All you got to do is say, yes, okay. I'll give it a shot, Phoenix. I will look at myself in the mirror and see if there's anything that maybe needs to be deprogrammed. At least attempt to, you know, listen and be respectful and be open and engage and try to think outside the box and expand my view 
Just lend yourself to this experience. I urge you. I urge you. Don't put your faith just in me. I'm not like some Jesus guy. I'm just a guy. I'm just another vessel of life like you. But I'm trying to get us like fingers of the same hand together. And once we've got our fingers working together, we can really grip and grasp the seeds of opportunity and change. And we can cast it into the soil of tomorrow. And then in time, we can finally receive the fruits of our labor. It's going to be hard. It's going to require courage. It's not going to be the easy way out. But there is no way out. There is no way out. These things are inevitable. You can put them off, but it's just going to get worse. There is no way out. The only way out is through. There's no better way to go through shit than together. There's no better way to rise above shit. And from that shit, from that chaos, from the ugly truth of yesterday, we can grow something magical. A world of opportunity, of freedom that we have hitherto never dreamed of. That sounds cool to you. Welcome to One Hoppy Rising and enjoy your stay. And I look forward to getting to know the lot of you. Phoenix. And, uh... Yeah, I refuse to fall. I refuse to fall in line and uh, just play along with my eyes closed. Um, you know, I'd rather trust, I would sooner trust you people with my eyes open than trust those people with eyes wide shut. What about you? Blessings, love and light.